Ah, this TV and this thing. Ooh. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't. Hey, I'm Scott Firestone with Theology of Games, and today we're going to be reviewing Pixel Lincoln. It's a deck building game by Jason Tagmeyer, and you know, just just scoot over. Let's let's just sit down and talk about this one for a little bit here. Hey, how's it going? Look. It's us. How did that happen? Together, it's which the, hardly ever happens. It's like the magic of video and editing. This is not a simulacrum. This is actually Jeremiah. Sitting at my house. I, I am not a doppelganger. A golem. None of those things. None of those things. I have a, a human heart. So, Pixel Lincoln. Pixel Lincoln. We're going to talk about it and show you how to play it and tell you what we think. Right now. Okay, let's talk about components real quick. So the game comes with four meeples, meeples of Lincoln, and uh, we're going to talk about this later, but Lincoln's head is round. Round. Distinctly round. It also comes with a player board here to put your cards on. Cards you score go here. Player cards will go there. Any cards you use as money will go here. Or if you're going to equip them to fight things, they'll go up there. Then we have the board, which has two sides to it. This side with the theater dun, dun, dun. Movie theater. or this side which has it's like a prison or something yeah i don't know is that like I'm a prison sure. riot level and then a gold thing Mine thing but two-sided that's cool yeah so it never gets boring so each person is going to start with a deck of cards here is your player card and then you have two life cards that's how you start you put them right there if you lose a life you take lose a, life. a life yeah yeah then you have a starting hand, just like most deck building games. You're either going to have a beard ring, which here it shows the power of one, and it's not worth any gold. And as a projectile, it can attack any enemy, even ones that are further in line and they don't have to be next to you. And then you also start with a jump card. Jump is worth no power and one value when using it as gold, and it allows you, if you use it, as an equipped card, then you can jump over the next card. Yep, you can equip it and just stick it there and you can use it as a jump. Or if you're gonna buy something with it, it goes like that. Nifty, eh? Hey, <laughs> what else do we have? We have lots of cards. There are character cards. Uh, these come out of the deck as you come through and they'll show up somewhere in the level. And if you pay the money, the cost on them here, which shows four pennies, get it? Because it's a Lincoln game, <laughs> pennies. And uh, so if you pay four money for that, you get to score that card. And then um, all the other cards have like these suits on the bottom corner, or some of them don't, or some of them have... Yeah, I like that one. Thank you. It's like I've got an extra pair of hands. I'm your um, banner. That's right. But if you, can, if you get the, the matching suits... For this character card, he'll give you extra points at the end of the game, and points are how you win, so that's great. These are enemy cards, and you'll see they've got a power rating, and that's how much power you have to activate when you equip cards to defeat them. And these are awesome, because it's puking turtles. That might be my favorite enemy in any game I've ever played. Or laser sharks. Are you kidding me? Do these sharks have freaking lasers? They're obviously powerful because, I mean, sharks with lasers are powerful. So those take four power to defeat. They're pretty awesome. They also have certain abilities that come into play too when you try to defeat them. Or after you defeat them, it'll activate something that changes what you do or allows you to draw a card or do something like that. So here are a couple of weapons we have. This is the Sausage Link Whip. It costs three to buy it. When you have it as a card, it can either be played for two power or two gold, and it will punch an adjacent enemy with Sausage Links. Here's a Mutton Star. It's super expensive. Five gold, but it's worth four power when you hit something. So if you get hit with a mutton, you're going to get hit with a mutton, and it's super powerful. So yeah, you construct your levels by putting a number of enemies and a number of items into a deck. And there's two levels that you can choose from. You, you build two levels for every game. And then the level deck sits here and then they kind of all come out. And you also put three checkpoints within each level. And the first time you draw a checkpoint, nothing really happens except for you. You can do one of these three actions. And then when you get to the second one, you pull out a mini boss and that one goes under that. And when somebody reaches that, you have to defeat the mini boss. Booth is a mini boss, which is pretty 
tough. I mean, he like killed Lincoln and he's just a mini boss. Or, you know, like the baguette bandit. These are all historical figures. Yes. Like Pigeon Man. He's. Yeah, I remember yeah. him. In the Battle of 1912. Or 1812. <laughs> you know, it's all Jeremiah's super good at history. Hey, I was homeschooled. On the third checkpoint, the big boss comes out and there's four to choose from. And I think there might have been like promo ones you could get if you did the Kickstarter. Yes, so Kickstarter probably, came with a few extras. There's some extra ones. Those are a little more powerful and more harder to defeat, but they also give you 10 points, which is pretty awesome. Once you have defeated both levels, both bosses, then the game's over and you tally up points. And that's pretty much how the game plays. You'll move your meeple along, deciding if you're going to jump over or defeat whatever is in front of you. So if we had these cards here, da -da 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 enemies and things like that, you could defeat this laser shark and then you could jump over these two and then you could get to, you could defeat this laser shark. And then if you get to the end here, if you get to the deck at the end, it's like a side scrolling game. Boop, 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 boop. They all go you go back and then you, you read. And yeah, you that's fine. You don't need those. Those aren't important, or maybe they are. And then, yeah, and then you refill those up. up and you keep playing. If you start a turn and you are next to an enemy, they ambush you and you have to immediately deal with them in some way. Other than that, uh, you just make your way through the level, stopping when you want to or need to, and can't play anything else. But it could be that other people will play it such that you'll end up starting your turn in front of a laser shark and hopefully you have a good hand or he's going to punch you in the face. And then you lose a life, which is also five victory points. Yes. So you want to hang on to life, because life is precious. Yes. Again, you go through the level, you defeat both bosses, whoever defeats them gets those points, and then you tally them all up and see who is the winner. All right, so that's how you play Pixel Lincoln. We're gonna tell you what we thought about it right about now. So that was a look at Pixel Lincoln and how you play the game. We're gonna talk about our thoughts, our uh, consternations. No, that's not the word. Constip. That's something different. <laughs> well, we'll just talk about some component things that we kind of liked and didn't like about the game. There's some cool things, and there were some, I think, some potential that almost was met, but just wasn't. Mm -hmm. Like the meeples. I was super excited when I saw the stretch goal for Lincoln meeples, and they reached it. Who doesn't want that? And I mean, who doesn't want that? But it's not like a top hat. It's like, a, it's like that alien on uh, this island Earth, or... Mars Attacks. Mars Attacks, which was probably taken from this island mm -hmm. Earth. Or Brother from Another Planet with the Afro. Mm -hmm. It's it's rounded. It's not like a top hat. Um, so I felt, man, so close. I wanted awesome Lincoln meeples, and I got meeples. I'm no haberdasher, but I do know <laughs> that a top hat is flat on the top. The stovepipe. Yes. It's often referred to right. and shaped. Does that deeply affect the gameplay? No. No. But it would have been cool if they would have just hit that one as a home run. Cool thing. Yeah. It came with these boxes. You can create your own levels pre-made and bring them to game night in these cool boxes that look like old Nintendo games. Yes. They're ready to go because, honestly, it takes a little bit of time for setup because you have to get three of these and two of these and one of those and you're looking through and you got to make yeah. sure the level is the right for you know what the level you want to play at hard or easy or whatever. And there's also the level editor that they put in there that helped you kind of get some examples of how to actually build a level that is pretty even and balanced. But yeah, this was cool because yeah, with any deck building game, setup is probably like the longest part of the game and then the game plays pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. And this was a cool way to alleviate some of that. I mean, you still have to take the time to do it. But it's before and, game night. Right. Nice touch. Now while everybody's sitting around going, hey, can we play? The player boards, cool touch. I like it, but it seems like this could have been spaced out better, and there's no place to actually put your deck or your discard. So you have this awesome board, and you get to do things and put your score pile here and such, but then, oh, I guess the other things are going to hang off on the side here. When there's room here, and do equip items need to be that big? I don't know. Anyway, yeah. something that seemed a little off to me that could have been put on an awesome board. Yeah, it seemed like it could have all been confined to that. Um... Again, not something that wrecks the gameplay. The artwork. I liked, yeah, I was just going to say, artwork, sweet. He's got a mackerel or something there. Holy mackerel. And there's like a robot with a brain bubble thing. And the artwork in the game itself is Yeah, fantastic. Cool. We love it. Pixely, it's fun, it's colorful, the it's characters are really cool. Imaginative. So let's talk about gameplay. Let's talk about gameplay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Once again, Jeremiah and I do not completely we agree are, on our game. We are at odds. I think the hang-up that you have with this is that it's called Pixel Lincoln, the deck-building game. 
And in a sense, you are sort of building your deck as you go through the game. But my take on it is, is it's actually more of the theme of a side-scrolling video game. It's more of an adventure card game than it is a deck building game. If I look at it in that sense, I'm perfectly fine with the game. Yeah, it's not a deck building game because in most deck building games you're building a deck. But in this one you're not really doing that. You defeat an enemy and they don't go into your deck. Like Dominion, if you if you get a victory point card, it's going to clog up your hand somewhat. So you do this awesome thing, but it slows you down a little bit and there's that to consider it even when you take one of those. In this game, you defeat an enemy and they go in a score pile. So I didn't build my deck in any way. You're buying cards that kind of do that. It's very difficult to call cards in this game. You can only do it at checkpoints. You can only do it if you choose that of the three options to do. So there's limited chances to get rid of those cards that are bad. And so you're not building, you're just kind of adding to. I would say that's one point I agree with. I, I like to be able to call my cards, get rid of those starter cards that are kind of weak. There's very little opportunity for that with this. To me, it's not a fundamental deck building game. It's about getting through the levels and trying to defeat the bosses and the villains and all that stuff that come up you and you don't there's not as much strategic decisions to be made as far as i need that card to put into my deck so that i can combo it with this card it's not really that in the sense of the deck building it's deck building because as you purchase cards they go into your deck but it's more about getting through the level and deciding if you're going to leave that level to try to get some of those cards. Or I still enjoyed it. I, I thought the theme made it fun. It really simulates that side-scrolling video game really well with how as you progress through and then cards that are left behind just kind of go away. So I liked it for that. I thought it was fun because it was just kind of nostalgic and more of a, an adventure game. I, that's what I would classify it as is a, a card-based adventure game. And I will say that I played it with four players and I played it with two players and I enjoyed it more with two players. I think it worked better. When we had the full complement of four, some people had turns where they couldn't do anything or because it's three other players before you get to play, a lot of times the level doesn't look anything like you expected and it's very easy to just start a level in front of an enemy and, and get ambushed. Right, you don't have just any, kind of getting drug along. Right, you don't yeah. have any options. It's like, oh, yeah. this thing's going to be completely changed because everyone's going to do everything. I've never been able to get a three-player game together. That might be the sweet spot for it. So, um, but yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. It, it it changes the game a lot depending on how many players there are. And one other thing that we noticed was you can construct your deck so that you're playing easy or medium or hard, but the bosses don't scale in any way. So if you construct a an easy deck well you're not going to really have a lot of it's hard to get powerful cards right. to defeat the bosses because the bosses are random they just come out right. and, and they're random so yeah that was a little a little tricky to navigate i mean we ended up getting through it right but it was it seemed a little clunky maybe recommendations played with my game group as i said a couple times and it was fine but nobody was really anxious to play again it's and I think because we went into it thinking it's a deck builder, so it doesn't feel like that for us. So we were kind of disappointed in that. I would play with this with my family, though. My, I think my kids will like this. They aren't obviously going to care about the nostalgia of 8-bit like <laughs> I do. Um, I have fond memories of that. But I think they're going to like it. It's fun. It's thematic. It's meat-based weapons. I would say probably the same thing. I would say definitely family, kind of kids kind of thing. My boys might be a little young for it, but, you know... Pretty soon we'd be able to pull it out and they would have a lot of fun with the goofy beard orang and, and that kind of goofiness. And I would say with your gaming group, if you're looking for a light fillerish or maybe a little longer than a filler type game, if you go into it going, look, this is just a fun card game mm -hmm. and you're not expecting like a deep deck builder, go for it. You're going to have a lot of fun. We have something else really cool to talk about. See that box? What do you have there? It's... it's <laughs> we have two Pixel Lincolns. Why do we have two Pixel Lincolns? We guys? have two because if you'll notice, this one is in the state of being opened, right? Yep. It's no longer. Nice. Yeah. This one is still shiny and shrink wrappy, which means it hasn't been opened yet. Which means we're giving it away <laughs> to one of you. To one of you. Assuming one possibly. of you listens to our podcast. That's right. That's where we're going to give it away. Podcast number three of the Theology of Games podcast. Go to iTunes, tell people, loved ones, hated ones. 
Everyone, yes. We're going to give the details there on how to win this game for yourself. Yes, you cannot find out how to win this copy of Fixel Lincoln anywhere else except for our podcast, episode number three. In fact, we, we can put a link down there to the podcast. We can? Well, it's yeah, amazing. it is amazing. It's technology. It's the internet. But we will put a link down there so you can click on that link, get our, our podcast, and we will tell you there how you can get that. It'll be delivered right to their door. Yeah, in a gigantic box because seriously, yes. look at that. How are we going to ship that? I don't know. That's huge. So how do you get it again? You listen to our podcast. Did we say listen to our podcast? You did. And you'll get your own copy of Pixel Lincoln. Thank you, Jason Tagmeyer, Game Salute, and yes. Island Officials for sending us this extra copy. That was super cool. They're super awesome, and they hooked us up so we could hook you up with that. Anyway, I'm Jeremiah. I'm Scott. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. We're Theology of Games guys. And we'll uh, see you later. Bye. So let's hook you up. What?